I was working as a dietitian, and um, at a meeting of our association, we had a recruiter from the Army who was uh, desperately seeking hospital dietitians to serve in general hospitals. And I thought, what the heck? Sounded like a good idea. I was commissioned as a first lieutenant. The war came home to me very loud and clear in December of 1943 when I was uh, visiting my family in Vancouver, British Columbia. And we got the news that my brother, who was in the Royal Canadian Air Force, my brother Philip Waterman, had been shot down over Belgium and had been captured. And um, we didn't know for quite a long time what had happened to him. We were on a very fast uh, liner that had been converted into a troop ship. And I don't believe we had any accompanying um, security. We were hoping that we would outrun subs. And apparently that, that was the case. And we landed in uh, the south of England when you're young, I think you can get through anything. It was a very, very cold, wet winter. We were in tents. I shared a tent with a Red Cross woman. We had a little pot-bellied stove. And um, sometimes we took our baths out of our helmets. Um, there was one episode, I remember, they did rig up uh, showers and went to take a shower and there was nothing but live steam coming out of the shower heads. We knew something was wrong and all of a sudden we heard this loud explosion. Well, we had uh, German prisoners of war who were doing menial tasks at, at the hospital. They worked in the mess. They brought um, coal to our, our tents, and they were guarded by Russians. Well, I think they had tried to uh, do a little sabotage by um, bringing this boiler that supplied the hot water to our showers into a situation where it would act like a bomb. Fortunately, it somewhat backfired. I don't know the consequences. But um, nobody was hurt in that episode. But some of the people who had been in England and had experienced the, um, I think they called them V-bombs, thought they were being attacked and dived under the dining room tables. The uh, Russians and the Americans were uh, liberating the prisoner of war camps. And um, we were getting a lot of these people who had been prisoners of war, some of them for the five years of the war, from 39 till 45. We had a uh, Russian who had been interned since 1939. And I remember we were feeding them high-calorie foods, and he took the bread off of his tray and he put it under his pillow. And I tried to convey to him um, that he would be getting more food at the next meal. They had lost weight in the area of 60, 70 pounds because they were fed uh, soup made out of potato peels or grass. That brought the war home to me very very, uh, in a very serious manner. It's difficult in a situation like that where you have a, a job to do to uh, maintain any kind of a level of hostility towards these men who, they were human beings too, and you just have to let it go. As we all learned later about the uh, concentration camps and the, um, the Holocaust, None of us knew about that either.